Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, been a while since I uploaded, so I wanted to give you guys an update on where we're at right now with poker and the vlog in general. Um, haven't had as much time to be playing since work got really, really busy at the start of June and towards the, uh, the start of July there. So um, right now it's July 15th and the footage I have recorded for this uh, vlog uh, was at the end of June. So um, yeah, that's that. But um, June was a really bad month. I lost the most in June, as you guys saw in uh, some of my other videos. But um, July has been going great. I started playing private games because um, I met a guy at Commerce, really cool. He invited me over to his house to play with some of his um, friends and other people he's invited. And um, I've been doing really well at those games. So I've been trying to stick to those because it's a little bit better environment than the casino. Uh, my last session, I'll show you guys where we're at right now. I won the most I've ever won. I won $650. Um, I bought in with $300. I left with $1950. So super excited about that win. It kind of uh, got us out of that hole we were in. I think we're only down like $300 now or so total since I started playing, which is pretty massive because we were down a bit um, towards the end of June there. So really thankful for that. I ran really well and I had, um, you know, I made a lot of good decisions as well. So. Um, I've been spending most of my time playing and studying rather than editing the vlog because I'm not that good at editing and it takes me like, you know, a long time to edit a video because I don't know all the efficiencies and stuff yet. So especially when work's really busy, I've just been not having as much time to get the content out. Um, but I'm going to start trying to do a bit more again on the vlog just because um, I took a little break there on the editing. So I don't have that much good footage right now. The The footage you guys are going to see is just kind of decent. It's still an interesting uh, day of playing. I think I left up on that day. Um, I think it was like on June 20th or something. I, for, I forgot the details, but um, yeah. Uh, the other good news is I might be able to uh, record my gameplay at Bellagio towards the end of July. I requested the vlogging um, authorization and stuff like that. So I'll be in Vegas uh, towards the end of July here and then um, hoping they accept my application. So that'd be really fun to be able to vlog at Bellagio and get like a change of scenery and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the update. I'm gonna be probably posting, you know, twice a month or so. That's kind of the goal. Um, if work gets too busy, maybe once a month, but um, the once a week, it's just not gonna be feasible right now with how much work I've, I've been getting. Um, so that's just kind of the reality of it, but I'm gonna focus on still playing and studying and um, giving you guys updates and you know uploading when I can. So thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking around and I hope you guys enjoy the video. In one of our first hands of the day, we pick up King-10 suited in the middle position. I originally bought in for $300 and I won a pretty nice uh, pot before this. I didn't have it recorded, but we're at about $400 now in our uh, stack. I open raised to $15 and there's three callers, so now we're four players headed to a flop. And that flop comes out as Jack 7-7 seven, seven, uh, Rainbow. The pot's at about $60 and the small blind checks. Action is now on me and I go ahead and make the check. Don't think there is anything else to really do here with two players to act after me on this flop. Hijack and the button also check, so now we are off to the turn, which is a six of hearts. Small blind's looking to make a bet here. I don't think I really need to be in this pot right now with two other players that still have to act after me. So I go ahead and make the fold after he bets out $30 and we take a small loss. Okay, so this next hand's a little bit weird. I pick up pocket aces and I don't have the pre-flop action recorded, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. Basically, I open raise the player to my left jams for a little bit more than what I raised with. And then the third player calls. I want to shove all in here, but I don't actually know the rules. I guess I'm not able to do that after someone goes all in. Um, kind of confused how that works, but yeah, I, I guess I just wasn't able to. So uh, the flop comes out queen two three with two clubs. I go ahead and make a bet of $15 and the small blind calls. So now we're off to the turn with three players and a side pot. Uh, King of diamond comes out here, which is a uh, pretty fine card for us. I think I'm going to continue with my range here and go ahead and make a bet for um, $50 and try to get some value, but small blind does fold. And then now we're off to the river, which is a seven of hearts. I go ahead and show the aces. The player to my left doesn't give us a reveal. Uh, I really wish I could have gone all in there pre-flop. I, I guess I just don't really know how the rules work on that when someone else goes all in and it's back to me to act. So I'm um, pretty disappointed in how that hand played out because I feel like we should have got more, but um, that's on me for not knowing the rules. 
Uh, shortly after that, we pick up King Jack offsuit and I open bet to $15. High Jack cut off and small blind called the $15. So now we're four players headed to a flop and that flop comes out with a king three queen with two clubs. Pot's at about $65 at this point. Small blind checks quickly over to me. I think this is a pretty favorable spot for us. Um, I go ahead and bet $30. We have a club in our hand, so I'm not too concerned about the two clubs on the board. The hijack folds, and now it's off to the cutoff to make a decision who makes the call, and small blind folds shortly after that, so we're now heads up, headed to the turn. On the turn, the 10 of hearts come out, which is a great card for us, I think. Um, it helps us get some value out of some ace 10s and things like that. And it also gives us a straight draw. So I'm uh, pretty happy with that card when it comes out. We also dodged the club flush in case that is a thing. And in, in case he wants to chase it, we can get some value out of that as well. So I go ahead and make a pretty beefy bet here of $65. Um, it's about half the pot, so it's not too much, but I'm hoping for a call here uh, with something like ace 10, like I said, or maybe even, um, you know, jack 10. So um, waiting to see what he does. He's in the tank for a bit here. You know, watching this hand back, I wonder if the right decision was to bet as much as I did. Um, maybe I should have bet a little bit less to get a, uh, a call, but I feel like the bet is pretty good because it would punish people trying to chase a straight or also a flush and also punishes those hands like ace 10, like I said, that I can maybe get value from, but um, he ends up folding. It would make sense, I guess, because if he had ace 10 on that board, it would be a little bit scary to continue for him because there's a king and a queen out there and... Um, yeah, I take down a pretty decent pot. Uh, we're on to the next hand here, which I pick up king-queen offsuit in the big blind. I have about $350 behind. Under the gun opens here for $20 with about $4 behind. Um, I'm not completely sure how the rules work with this at the casino because they keep allowing her to go all in and then just buy in for like $40. So it was a bit frustrating, but um, no big deal. Cut off calls to $20. And I go ahead and make the call as well. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm able to put in like 24 here and make them go all in. I, I, I really don't just based off the casino rules and how it works here. Um, the aces hand kind of made me second guess how to play poker, I guess, because I thought I understood the way the betting works, but, um, that one kind of tilted me. So the flop comes out nine queen ace rainbow. Um, I go ahead and check and then under the gun, uh, shoves the $4 effectively. So, um, you know, like in this situation, I don't know if I'm able to raise when I see the cutoff just call the $4 because obviously I'd want to raise him here, I think, because it kind of shows a bit of weakness to just make the call there for $4, but um, maybe it's better to just call anyways. The two of diamonds comes out on the turn. Um, you know, we both check. The nine of hearts comes out. Um, at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that we have a good hand to uh, bet a bit and try to get a little bit of value, but cutoff folds and we show the king queen. Um, I think this opponent on the left has an ace most likely, especially when they go to show, but they don't. They actually have a, I think it was like a king jack offsuit. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was pretty cool. We won a decent pop, but once again, kind of confused with how the betting works and people go all in. In one of the last hands of the night, we pick up ace-9 suited in under the gun position. I open raised to $15. There's only six players at the table right now instead of the eight or nine we typically have. So um, I'm playing a little bit looser in general at this point, but the button and small blind make the call for $15. And we are now uh, three players headed to the flop when the other players fold. This hand's a little bit weird because the floor is talking to us as well as the dealer about how after this we might break the table and then also uh, merge with some other people. So. It's a little bit distracting, but the 8-9 king of clubs comes out on the flop. Um, small blind and I check. It's a pretty wet board here, so um, not the best flop for ace-9 suited. We have middle pair, and there's a flush out there probably. So when the uh, button makes the bet of $15 and small blind folds, I go ahead and just put in the call because I think we still have decent equity here, or maybe we even have a good uh, bluff chance later down on another street, depending on what the button does. Um, especially with the $15 bet, it seemed a little bit low. The queen of spades comes out on the turn, so I go ahead and check it back to try to do some pot control here. But I actually get a little bit experimental here. So the button bets out $15 again, which I see as a very weak bet. Um, I see that as maybe he has like a top pair or maybe he has a club and he's looking for another club trying to build a pot. Maybe he has a weak flush, but I think this is a decent chance to practice my bluffing. Um, so I go ahead and put in the check raise to $60. Now, I'm not sure how good this bluff is because I don't have really any blockers to the flush out there. I have two hearts in my hand. Um, it's, you know, 
if, if he calls this and then I check the river and then he bets on the river, I'm probably most definitely folding. I'm, I'm not very experienced with bluffing. I don't know when the best times to do it are yet, but I wanted to get some practice in and I feel like this was a good hand because everyone was kind of distracted um, and it worked out. He actually folds. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of stuff beat us on this board. So I think he had a better hand, but um, it worked out. Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning into that one. Um, wanted to give you guys a little bit of an outro. We uh, bought in for $300 or so on that game um, and we cashed out like 390 or 400 or something. So made about like $100 in profit. A little bit of a frustrating session just because the table kept breaking and I had to keep like setting up my camera again. And um, that's why there wasn't too much footage towards the end there. Um, I went to two other tables after that last hand uh, and we ended up just kind of winning a hundred bucks. So. Uh, overall, pretty happy that we won. Was a little bit frustrating when the lady to the left of me just kept, um, you know, buying in for $40, $40, and then going all in, all in. And it made it hard for me because the rules weren't very clear on when I can all in and when I couldn't. Um, but that was my fault for misunderstanding, I guess. But it was definitely pretty frustrating to play with. I'm not one to complain, so I'm not going to, you know, complain to the, um, the floor or anything like that. But I just let it... Um, you know, I, I thought the minimum buy-in was like 100 or 200, so I'm, I'm confused why she was allowed to keep buying in for $40, but I guess maybe when you lose it, you get to buy in for whatever amount. Like I said, rules weren't really clear to me, so, um, but you know, no, no big deal. We still won a bit. Um, yeah, so hoping to see you guys in the next one. Um, that was a small win there, and um, you know, July's going well, so we're gonna keep it going. And uh, hopefully next time you guys will see me, we'll be at the Bellagio, if everything works out with getting the, uh, authorization to vlog there uh, and if not all good we can get some uh, local casinos again so yeah thanks for tuning in guys see you soon